Okay, so in this video, I'm going to um, talk about the assumptions on um, standard monopoly problem or model and compare it with the perfectly competitive markets assumptions. Um, just a note, um, the assumptions uh, on models that we talk about throughout this course is very important. Um, you should understand them by heart and you should know them by heart because uh, we are not going to give you those assumptions again and again in questions, in tests and in exams. So we're going to say just, oh, there's a single seller in the market. That's it. So from that, you should understand that we are talking about a monopoly and hence follows the assumptions. All right. So I'm not going to repeat those assumptions uh, in every question. So for that reason, you have to know um, all the standard assumptions on a given model. In this case, it's monopoly. Um, there's also a second group of assumptions, which are question specific assumptions. So in the model assumptions, we're going to say, oh, uh, there's many buyers and hence the firms face a demand curve. But we don't really say anything about the specifics of demand curve. Is it linear? Is it nonlinear? Doesn't matter, okay? Because the model just takes the demand as given. But the question, in order to solve a numerical question, you have to know the specific functional form. Sometimes it's going to be linear uh, for simplicity, sometimes it's going to be nonlinear, all right? So sometimes we're going to give you a linear cost function or fixed marginal cost, no, uh, no fixed cost. And sometimes we're going to give you, for example, a convex cost function. All right. So these are all question specific assumptions. All right. So each question uh, are usually going to just tell you, oh, here is the problem. It's monopoly. So you should basically understand that those assumptions are coming with that statement. And then the question will actually focus on the question specific assumptions like, oh, here is the um, demand curve. Here is the cost function. Here is the notation we use for output and price and whatever. All right. So these two sets of assumptions are very critical to understand what the question is talking about. All right. So here I have assumptions on monopoly and perfectly competitive market. So um, in the monopoly, we assume there is a unique seller. In a perfectly competitive market, there are many sellers. Number matters because here in a perfectly competitive market, because there are many sellers, each firm is very powerless. I mean, very powerless doesn't make sense, is powerless and they cannot change the market price, but the monopoly can. So this assumption is actually going to influence uh, the assumption three later. So those assumptions are related. The second assumption, there are many buyers in the market. Same for perfectly competitive uh, market. We usually assume there are many buyers in the market. So that means, um, well, I mean, we don't really focus on the buyer side because we would like to think about how the monopoly behaves. So we would like to take the buyer side behavior as given which is represented by the demand curve, the inverse demand curve, P of Q. All right. So in both competitive market or monopoly, there's going to be some demand curve, linear or not, doesn't matter. Well, the monopolist is a price maker. However, a competitive, a firm in a competitive market or competitive firm is a price taker. All right. So what does that mean? That means the monopolist is going to choose any price it wants to maximize its profit. All right. So it's free to choose the uh, 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 price. The perfectly competitive firm, however, cannot choose the price. It takes the price as given. For that reason, we call it price taker. Well, um, why is that the case? Well, that's again by the single seller versus many seller assumption, because there are there's only one seller, the monopolist can choose the price. I can charge a very high price, uh, but because I know that the customers are not going to go to another seller and buy the good from the other sellers, right? So that's the reason why I can make the price. But in the 
perfectly competitive market, I can't increase my price because the assumption is such that if I increase my price, because there are many sellers selling exactly the same product, my customers are actually going to go to one of the other sellers. So I'm going to lose all of my customers if I even slightly increase my price. Well, I don't want to decrease my price because I am charging my marginal cost, if you remember our discussions in competitive market. So therefore, the marginal firm, no, a perfectly competitive market firm cannot influence the market price. All right. By the way, I forgot to put that, but it's actually very important. In both monopoly model and perfectly competitive market, we're going to assume there's a single product. All right. I don't know, maybe assumption zero, single product. And same here, assumption zero, single product. Well, is this an important assumption? No, not really. It's just a simplification assumption. Um, in more advanced uh, classes, we do actually look at cases where there are multiple products that the monopolist produces. An even more complicated scenario, the monopolist can be Actually, the firm can be monopolist on some of those uh, products and not monopolist in other uh, products. All right. So just to keep things simpler, there's one product only. There's no close substitutes or substitutes. All right. And so uh, let's go with that uh, one product assumption. Unless otherwise stated, when we talk about second degree price discrimination in chapter two, you'll see the monopolist will actually produce two products and you will also see things actually get more complicated when we have more than one product. Okay. Uniform pricing. Uh, that's very important and you'll see how it matters uh, when we talk about chapter two, the price discrimination. Uniform pricing means the monopolist sells the, the good to all the customers for the same price. It cannot charge different prices for different customers. All right, so that's an assumption. In reality, this is not the case. For example, you usually, I mean, you in some markets and for some goods, you can negotiate with the seller, right? If you're buying, for example, a car, used car especially, or if you go to a bazaar in, um, I don't know, um, in, 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 in some of the Eastern countries, um, well, you'll see that haggling and negotiation and bargaining is actually a part of uh, price formation. All right. And so negotiation means different buyers will end up with different prices. Right. Um, so this isn't the case. It's uniform pricing. That matters. You'll see in chapter two. Um, well, in a perfectly competitive market, obviously the pricing is uniform because remember the firm is a price taker. So every consumer pays the same price and, and the firm takes that price as given. So by default, uh, the perfectly competitive firm also um, uh, price the customers uniformly, meaning charges the same price. All right. Well, the monopolist not only chooses its price, but also chooses its quantity to maximize its profit. Well, the perfectly competitive firm chooses quantity as well, but it's the only choice. So a perfectly uh, competitive market firm is actually choosing its profit by, uh, by, by more constrained environment. You cannot choose the price. You can only choose the quantity. The monopolist, on the other hand, is free to choose both. And that's going to give uh, 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 I mean, this is a degree of freedom and monopolist is, is actually freer than the perfectly competitive market. And ha as a result of this, you'll see the, the profit of the monopolist will be positive. On the other hand, if you remember, the profit of the uh, perfectly competitive market in the long run is zero. Uh, the economic profit, obviously, not accounting profit. Okay, well, both... A monopolist or perfectly competitive firm faces a cost, right? Producing an output, Q, um, is going to cost you something. I mean, the seller doesn't have to be the producer. You can just buy the products and just sell it, for example, on Amazon. So you may not be actually producing. But nevertheless, when you buy the product to sell them, 
um, well, you have to pay a cost, right? So the cost depends only on the quantity you sell, nothing else. All right. Well, um, this assumption plays no role in the short run, but in the monopoly, we don't make any distinction of long run, short run, because there is no entry or exit in this market. All right, so the monopolist is the only firm and there is going to be no entry and the monopolist will not have the option of exiting unless otherwise stated. In a perfectly competitive market, however, the assumption is that there's a free entry and free exit, which drives the profits to zero in the long run. All right. Well, what is the monopolist problem, therefore, which what we will talk about uh, formally and mathematically in the next video, the monopolist and or perfectly competitive firm aim or objective is to maximize its profit. All right. So they're not none for profit um, institutions. They run the firm to make profit and they try to maximize their profit. Well, what are their choices? The monopolist chooses not only price, but also quantity to maximize profit. However, the perfectly competitive firm only chooses its quantity to maximize its profit because the price is fixed given by the market demand and market supply. All right. Here, obviously, although P and Q are both choice variables, monopolist knows that they are related by the demand curve. I mean, you can produce thousands of units, but you can probably, you can't probably charge very high price if you want to sell all those products because there is a quantity demand, quantity supply, all right? So the, the quantity demand has to be equal to quantity supply. If it is not, well, you're not going to be able to sell the products that you actually uh, pay for. And I mean, it, it costs you something to, to, to produce those products. And so you would like to sell all of them. And hence, you have to charge the price that's going to clear the market. So more is coming up in the next video.